Hi, this is Tony Blankston again from Jerry's Music Shop in South Hadley, Mass. And we're going to talk to you about a sousaphone today. This is the sousaphone, and it's in bits. The first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get them in bits, and you need to know how to build it. And so you actually have to build it this time. So you like a clarinet player. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find your neck. So that's this bit. Um, you're going to put it into the lead pipe here, right? Uh, you're going to tighten down the screw that's in that position. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the body of the horn. I typically end up putting it in between my legs, so that way I can have both my arms. I then take the bell, put it in. Make sure that the, the screws are loose before you put it in, because you got to have loose screws to play the tuba. Um, and then from there, you tighten it down. All, right, all three screws. There's nothing worse than having your bell fall off in the middle of the performance, and that has actually happened to me. So don't let that happen. Tighten your screws down. All right? It should be loose enough that you can still move it around a little bit because you're going to need to adjust that. Now, that's your sousaphone. Right? Uh, word of the wise. You see I'm putting it on the ground right now? Don't let that happen either. Once you attach your bell, if you take it off, make sure you put it on your foot because you don't want to wear a hole in the brass, right? Or in this case, the, the fiberglass. I once had a sousaphone that was not cared well. It had a hole from here all the way down to there because people would just put it on the ground, just kind of sit and stare, look around, look at that, wore a hole through it. So it was not a fun instrument to play. So once you do that, the next thing you do, you take it, put it on your shoulder. There you go. And centered. So the way it should be set up is this bell should be facing where you're facing. Um, that's how you do it. You don't want this bell facing out that direction because that means the sound's going to go there, right? If you have the bell facing that direction, it's going to go there. These things are obvious, but a lot of people don't pick it up. So when you get it, make sure that it's centered right where you want it facing forward. Uh, on some of the different models, this bell would actually come a little bit lower on on your head around here. That's okay. Don't be frightened by that. You want it to be centered to where you're going to be marching straight on with it, right? Um, the carriage position is, well, it's kind of obvious. There's not very many places you can go with this. So your hand's going to go right there, rest on it. You're going to have this hand to hold. If you use a lyre, you could also hold the lyre right, right in front of your face. That works. Um, when you're at rest, when you're not marching or you, you can't take the horn off, you can put it across both both your uh, shoulders just like that, so it's a little bit like a yoke on your back. So that way it spreads the wealth a little bit. Another place you can hold it is down like that. This is good for walking through crowds or doors. You can you can do that. Just make sure that you uh, warn people a bell's going to be coming through. So all those options are good. Now another thing to be aware of is we have this lovely homemade piece of foam pad right here. Um, and yeah, they work about as well as anything else you can do. And it, it looks just like that. All right. Um, the, they do sell pads that you can buy. They actually sell two different types of pads for these horns. One is just where this shoulder pad is right there. And it's made of leather. It's very nice. The other one that they sell actually, again, starts here and goes all the way across the bottom of the horn to protect against dents, dings, and other things. That one's actually a little bit more useful for the horn, not for you. So it protects and extends the life of the horn. The one on the shoulder, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The weight of the tube is it's, it's heavy. This one's a light one. The fiberglass ones are pretty light. If you're wearing a brass one, just good luck. The best thing to do is just get strong, get really big up top, and then well, that way you won't feel it. But um, otherwise, it's, it's going to get heavy. A three-mile parade, it's going to hurt. Just, I'm sorry. That's just the truth of the matter. So you can go ahead and get one. Uh, I suggest buying one because they look better. You can wear it on the outside, and you don't look like you have a homemade thing on top there. But, um, but sticking a pillow underneath your uniform will make you feel better here, but it won't really add much to the, uh, to the protection of it. So just get stronger. Get used to it. You'll be fine. All right? You've got to get stronger, and that's fine. Also, how you want to store this instrument is going to be different. We've already talked about how you hold it when you're at rest, but another thing that you want to do is when you need to put the instrument down, what you don't want to do is put it like this. 
That is not what you want to do. All right. So as you can see where it's resting, it's actually resting on the valves themselves. It's resting on the brass of the instrument. It's resting on the bottom of the fiberglass and the bell, it'll be fine. But um, that right there, if it's a brass horn, it will dent the bottom quite solidly. And a fiberglass horn, like I said before, it can actually wear a hole through the fiberglass. So how do you want to store this instrument then? Like that. Right, just like that. So it's safe, it's solid, it's on the floor. Yes, this one's wobbling a little bit, that's okay. It won't wear a hole in, in any of this, uh, the horn right now. And also, if you're concerned about somebody not seeing it, I mean, it's a big, giant, white thing. Um, they'll be fine, they'll, they'll see the instrument. So that's the safest way to store this instrument uh, when not playing and you need to, like say, take a water break at marching practice or what have you. So store it like that. And again, as we mentioned before, when you store the instrument, uh, rest with the instrument, make sure it's resting on your foot. Unless you have that, that leather um, protecting sleeve on the bottom of the instrument, that's what that's there for. And to get it up, and again, you just grab it right here, pick it up, put it right on. There you go. That's the sousaphone.